Where is everybody? Start. So that's so strange. How is this possible? A class of seventy. A class of thirty-six, and there's sixteen people. Wow. But you know what? You're wasting your mentorship. And do you know I don't repeat shit, so. Damn ass motherfucker. Yeah, let's get on. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Damn fuck. Well, guys, so. Useless those who are here are here, and those who are not are not. All right. Idiots. Let us start. Okay. So, what we're actually going to do today, right, is we're going to put everything together, guys. Right? We're going to make this as simple as possible by just, you know, putting everything that we've learned together. Right? So, let's, let's, let's start, right? Let's start by analyzing, right, the... The four hour chart, right? So this is how we start. So we're going to start by analyzing the four hour chart. And there goes my network again. Jesus, network sucks. Sorry, guys, just give me a second. Let me just put it on my. <laughs> Man, oh shit. Who's this guy? Really? The hell? The hell's going on here? As I was saying, guys, we're going to start on a four-hour chart. So today, I want to I want to kind of like just you know get into the grifty stuff, like you know how we analyze a chart and and uh, um, 
you know, just, 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 just very simple things like confirmations, order blocks, supply and demand, um, fib, and uh, we're just going to use, you know, liquidity, highs and lows. Something very simple, a simple strategy we're going to put together real quick. All right. So now, right, let's look, let's start with what, Acer? Order block. An order block, and the order block is now a supply zone, yes? Yes. Great. And we can then draw in a level of demand, right? And then let's look at another level. So I would say this level over here. Right. Now, some people tend to draw it not with the wicks. I prefer it this way. Many prefer taking the whole order block. I don't, especially not when I'm just drawing a supply um, or demand zone, right? So here we have an order block, but we're not going to take that into consideration. What we're going to take into consideration is this level. All right, so we've got a we've got our levels over here, right? This being our levels on the four hour, right? So we've got a push, a halfway turn, and a push. You with me? So we have a push. The price pushes up. That's fifty percent of that complete move, and then we see price dip in and price push away. All right now. Now that we've kind of got like this, you know, intact, we might want to look at what price did previously. And uh, same goes for this. And obviously that level over there. Right. So, so strange. Right now, we can obviously see what happened here, right? So, we can see that price pushed away every time it got to the zone. Can you see that? Yes, sir. We can all see that, right? We can see that price pushed away every time it came to this demand zone, right? This demand zone, so or price push away. Now, guys, let's look at this, right? What, what do we call this block over here? Let's draw it out. What is that yeah, no contraction zone? Your mom's pussy. It's a contraction yeah. zone, correct. Now, we would want to see price do something at this level. Right? Actually, we would want it just above price action, somewhere there. Um, um, right, there we go. Now, you can see that to the T, price pushed away from that. Really your box. <laughs> your box right. Now, if we pull... <laughs> This all the way through, you can basically see. Oh, when it's straight, right? 
you would then see that even if you didn't have this zone drawn out, right? Let's take the zone away. Right? We knew that as soon as price came to this, price would push away. And as soon as price came back to that level, price would push away. Even higher. Oh, higher, lower. What I'm trying to get at, guys, is that I'm using very simple terminologies here. Very simple terminologies. We're not using mitigation. We're not using any of that. Even though we had mitigation over here of that order block, I'm not using that. Right? I'm not using that. And what am I using? I'm using a four-hour chart. Right. So let's go back to simplicity. Right. Now, everybody was asking me today, Marco, how did you catch that sell? Marco, how did you catch this buy? Guys, it's simple. We would have already known that soon as price came into this level, right, prior to what it did previously, that price would then push away. Can you see that? Oh my God, this guy's full of shit. Can everybody see that? Now, what's, now what has price done at that level? Remember now, right, let's clean these charts. What do we call this? Order block. An order block. An order block that wasn't respected. Right? Right. Yes, right. Perfect. Even though, even though it's this order block and it's this leg that took that low. Right. Now remember, guys, price own won't this order block was respected. It just wasn't respected where we know it to be respected. Right. But now, but now think about this, right? When price came back to this level, we were expecting price to push away, right? Price was to push away, right? Yes. So since price didn't push away, what does this order block become now? The monster. Yeah, but if an order block is not respected, what does that order block become? What happened over here? What happened? Price broke. Broke right through this order block, right? So what does this order block become? Is it a breaker block? Exactly, a breaker block. So this order block will now only be respected when price breaks into it. It's a breaker block. We break into, price breaks into the order block, right? Not, not, not from the downside, but price breaks comes down to that same order block, right? But price breaks the order block, so it becomes a breaker block. And then we're looking for price, once price breaks it, and that becomes a breaker block, price should then come in and mitigate that breaker block. And as we can see, right, at this level, we have a bullish order block, meaning that there were orders over here that were left behind. And that's why we see this reaction happening over here because we mitigate out of our positions, right? We mitigate out of our positions, but that's not the case here. With a breaker block, we don't mitigate out of our positions. We take our same positions that were once sell to buy. Making sense? So we, we, were, we had a sell-off, right? We had a sell-off, meaning that the guys over here who were trying to push price higher were in a negative. And as soon as they came in here, right, what did they do? They broke right through, right? So they're now in a positive. 
right? So they could hold, they could hold the 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 the, the, the negative positions, and they decided that you know what, you know what, we are going to hold, and then we are not going to push price lower because it wasn't. It was remember, guys, this is a bullish order block, right? So at this level, there's bullish order flow. Price is going to push away from that order block. And that's what we saw. We saw price push away from that breaker block. Price pushed away, meaning that this order block became a breaker block. And soon as price broke out of an order block, making it a breaker block, price would then come back and collect those orders and push price even further up. You with me? Yes, sir. Making much sense. Is this making sense, guys? Yes. 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 So you're no, expecting it to make a new eye from that level, actually? Correct. Correct. Right. right. Now, we can see that this order block was mitigated exactly 50%. Right? We're going to call it an order block because we know it as an order block, but it's actually a breaker block. Soon as an order block is broken and not respected, remember that we know, right, we know that a order block should be respected. Now, if we look over here, this order block over here was not respected. Right? Correct. Now, why wasn't this order block respected at all prior to this move or anything? Even though price broke out of it, making it a breaker block, why wasn't it respected? Because guys, it wasn't this order block that took out this low. It was that order block that took out this low. Out this low. You with me? Yes. Right. Now, we knew, we, we obviously thought that once price taps into this level, price would then push away as it has done previously. Right? But you see, when price pushed into this level, right, they made a decision to then push price higher. So the same guys who had orders over here have made a decision to say, listen, we'll keep our positions, right? We'll keep our positions and then we will then push price down, right? We'll then push price down to collect these orders. But for now, right, we'll buy over here, right? Because we know, right, we know that at this level, right, at this level, we'll come back down, collect those orders, and then push price even higher. You with me? So it's an institution like this that has serious funds to its name, right? Because this is what you would expect. You'd expect price to pull away. So once price came into here, you would have expected them to pull away. That's why everybody was waiting for that fall. But like I said, guys, like I said, they can change the movement, but never change the language. Now, where's the language? The language is here, guys. Right over here. Right over here is the language. They made a decision to push price higher. Made a decision to push price higher. Right? Not respecting an order block. So once we break through, it became a breaker block. But price still would come back and respect it. Just not in terms of down and then, sorry, down, up, and then down. But instead, down, up, and then down. However, though, that breaker block was still respected. You with me? 
Yes. Now, guys, how many pips does NASDAQ move? I want to see if you guys know this. How many pips does NASDAQ move? If you had to look at NASDAQ, how many pips does NASDAQ move prior to every time they now need to um, make a decision on business to either push price higher or get discounted price? Let me show you guys something. Look at this, guys. Is it a coincidence? No, it's not. Right. Now, can we all see that? Let me just make it thicker. Right. Can you all see that? Can we all see that? Yes. Right. Then there was a... Contraction. Where there was a contraction. Contraction where they made a decision, and then... Is that a coincidence? No, it's not. The amount of pips from here to here before they made a... Decision. Decision is going to be the same amount of pips from there to there. It's not a coincidence. Look at this. The fuck? Is it a coincidence? It's not. NASDAQ moves this many pips before it makes a decision. Let's do it another one. A decision was made. Now, everybody was asking me, Marco, how did you know that there was going to be a fall? Guys, look at that pattern. Can we, can we all see it? Yes. Now, wait, can you see that there's a huge difference between that and that? Yes. Now, if you look at this, this was the only time, this was the only time the market started rejecting buyers from going higher. It was the only time. Yes, I've noticed they, they took a long time to grab the liquidity upwards. Correct. Now, this is telling you that we're getting ready for a sell-off. Oh. And now, all we're looking for is either that to play out, and if that is aligned with my third, then I know exactly what the market's going to do. How easy was this, guys? How easy was this? How easy was this? Now remember, guys, anything below the 50, anything below the 50 is considered discounted price. Right? They broke out of the 50. So this automatically tells me that they have gotten there discounted price. If we take this whole move, they got discounted price. Yes, they could have come over here. That would have been obviously more of a discounted price, but they still got discounted price. Guys, when these guys get discounted price, they're going for the third leg. Meaning we've got A, B, C, and where could price, where can we see price going from here? We can now see price. Uh, 
pan moving the same way. Yeah. Perfect. 15,500, give or take. It's a profit. And all you want to do is when we talk about trend lines, is just. No, we're using them for confirmation. So that's a start of my trend line. I now want to see price respect my trend line. So what am I looking for now? Now I'm looking for this exact same thing. Is it a coincidence? No, it's not. Can everybody see that? Hmm. Price just did what it did be previous. Look at that. Right? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for price to make a decision somewhere over here. <laughs> and there's the next move. And then what? Price to make a decision somewhere over here. And then we move up. Price makes another decision. And we move up. Now let's look how many takes it took. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So think there's a coincidence. Hey guys, I still think it's a coincidence. Mm -mm. No, sir. I feel like this is this 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 should really help you guys now. Way too much. You know, Seth, if you can see them consolidating as they had done previously, and then all of a sudden, right, the pattern starts to change. You can expect that that is the end of the move. I am now giving you the golden nuggets. When you can see that price is not doing what it did previously, right? When you can see what price that price is changing, right? The 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 the, the order flow and how it moves, you can expect the next move. So we would look for price to start moving, right, in a certain way, and then it will indicate to you, giving you something that is not of its nature, which we are used to is something like that. And that's when you can see that price is now starting to form a certain perhaps wedge or a certain price action, and we can then see it dumping. So once we start seeing price doing something like this, you can expect that fall. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah, especially from uh, when it makes higher highs. Yeah. So, okay, so can you rather expect it right there, right there? Can we can we expect it to to fall till the to that order block before the fall? Which order block? Right there before the the long candles. Order block over here. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you obviously now know that that's going to be a breaker block. So, so we won't 
So we won't consider this to be a level where price is going to bounce down, mm. bounce off it. We're not expecting price to bounce off it. It bounced off over here. We're then expecting that massive breakout and then looking for, sorry, a massive breakout, complete breakout. And then one price does that, we're looking for it to come in. We need to get those orders and price move within further. this level to move higher. Come back down. Probably find a breaker block somewhere over here. And price moves back up. Now, obviously, within this here, we're going to get a four. And, you know, we're going to get a, a you know, on, on, on a, on a one-hour chart or 15 minutes, you're going to see this huge four, but it's not a huge four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're looking at two weeks, they even months. Yeah. I hope this helps you. Mm. Way too much, sir. I appreciate it. I feel like you guys wanted a strategy and a simple strategy that works. I just showed you how I knew that the market was going to fall. Hence, I caught the four, but I also caught the buy. So I caught the four, and I don't know if you guys saw that. I did two withdrawals today of almost 500,000, and Sheesh. I caught the buy. Yeah. I did two live withdrawals, yeah. yes. So one that was. Fall, that four yesterday blew me. <laughs> I do you should have seen it coming. Yeah, you see, that's what I feel, I feel like. I feel like the reason you didn't see it coming is because I hadn't given you that last piece of the puzzle where we can now look at how to determine where price is going because it moves a certain amount of pips. Mm. Yeah. Also, and and then okay. price changed. Mm. It's form and ways of moving. Understand? We weren't. We 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 never saw this anymore, because we saw this. Yes, we did. It took place over here, but it was at this point, and only at this point, that we saw that price is not making the typical movement we're looking for. Before mm -hmm. final rejection. So you were in the cell for quite some time. I mean, these are, this is a four-hour chart. Yeah. So No, I was in the cell yesterday. Yeah, yeah, but you waited like quite some time before the drop actually came. Yes, but I knew that the drop was coming. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm showing you how I knew that the drop was coming. Yeah. Because you see, it was this. It was this last candle push-up that took mm. out that final liquidity. Yeah, it took, the, it took the stops from everyone that actually sold and then sold. Yeah, because everybody who was, who, was, who was trying to get in, right, obviously has their stops. Just above there, yeah. Just above there. So we can definitely see price probably, you know, Wait, coming into this level, right? Mm. But then making a decision as they build liquidity and push price higher. Yeah. Yeah, and that's always does that, eh? Yeah, and then that doesn't, that's no longer an order block, it's a yeah. breaker block. And the reason we see this continuing to happen is because there was no fair value for buyers here. And that's another reason why they then push price higher because now sellers were here and buyers want to now, you know, you know show their, 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 their strength. You understand? And that's why in most cases, you'll see that 
once they show their strength, you'll see that, you know, um, two, three, four big moves happening over here with obviously consolidations taking place, right? And then you'll find out that, you know, it was at this level, right? It was at this level where that low came down, right? Or you might even find a low somewhere over here, right? But price doesn't push away. Price only takes liquidity. So it takes out those bottom legs and then price pushes away. Did every, who, who, saw, who saw my Wyckoff? I sent it in the group. Who saw my Wyckoff? Nobody saw it. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm not saying I, I, I saw it, sir. Okay, so this looks like we could have a schematic too where the spring, the, well, obviously the STB plays as the spring, right? And then yes. price gets marked. That's okay. Yes, right? Then we have, a, we have a sign of strength somewhere over here, and then price is marked up before. A decision is made. Then we come to test. No. And then we have a distribution phase. No. Yeah. And guys, this is just the way the market works. So we have, you know, our accumulation phase. Price pushes up. Right or reaccumulation. This might be a, I don't know, no, that wouldn't be. Maybe on a smaller time frame, we might see this being accumulation, yeah, and then probably. price pushing up, reaccumulation, price pushing up, distribution, price pushes down. Yeah. So then that would be our markdown in price. And this is just how the market works, guys. This is just how the market works. It's as simple as that. Um, should we've got one minute? So let me just quickly finish this off. But did you guys did you, did you guys understand this? Yes. Uh, yeah, I like it. Thanks. Well, it's, uh, I appreciate it. So. You understand. Marcus, so yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, how many pips did you say um, a Nasdaq moves uh, within a Nasdaq day? Nasdaq moves within with, 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 within a range of 100, 150 pips. Okay, but it would do the same leg over and over again as we saw you understand All right. as soon as price pushes up you can expect that same leg give or take to be well yeah. if we had to say exactly then that's exactly mm -hmm. yeah. you understand yeah. so this is what you can expect NASDAQ to push up in price continuously until we stop. Not placing your feelings into a trade. What are we basically saying? We're saying that in order for that not to take place, in order for that not to happen, right, what needs to be done? You need to get over a certain fear. You need to get over a certain way of thinking. You need to get over a certain way of understanding or acknowledging what could or couldn't have happened. Make sense? You with me, guys? Yeah. So, you thinking and you knowing are two totally different things. When you 
know what the market's going to do, then it's no longer a thinking game. You're no longer thinking what the market's going to do. You know what the market's going to do. How do we get to a point where we know what the market's going to do? It is when you understand what the market is. Correct. Correct. Now, how do we take such principles into matters where we can actually do this work to a point where even if the manipulation comes into play, we are still not manipulated by it. Anyway, answer me. Come on, guys. Okay. Let's go to a chart. Right. You know we have double highs. Hmm. Okay, equal highs, right? Yeah. Everybody can see that, right? Yes. Everybody yeah. equal highs. If this was the situation currently happening, right? Let's look at this part of the market, right? This is happening now, right? This is happening in the market. Let's pretend that this is actually unfolding in the market, right? What are your thoughts at this level? Have you bought <coughs> or are you waiting to sell? We are at the highest the market's gone on. What are your thoughts? I would say, Marco, it's, it made a new high, which means that it's a psychological area point where the market came so okay. i would rather say if you are in the buy where the all the green candles are up mm -hmm. you need to think now is the market going to go higher or is it going to reject that level there okay now what would you be thinking now you already know that the market fell we all know that we saw that but what would your thoughts here be? This is psychology now, guys. What would your thoughts be? What would you be thinking right now? This is this is what's happening in the market right now. Right? <coughs> we had the impulse, right? We had an impulse. We had a pullback. We had an impulse. What are you thinking is going to happen now? That is going to drop. Reversal. And we're going to probably have a reversal because we've had an impulse, a reverse, and now an impulse, right? So mm -hmm. we're basically looking for a reversal. Right? Yes. But now, but now, how is your thinking? What are you thinking? Let's say you've analyzed this chart. What are you thinking? Let's say, guys, let's say you analyze this chart. What would you be doing right now at this moment? The market is up there. You've just created a new high. I'd be selling. You'd be selling. Uh, I'd be looking for previous areas of support or resistance and then looking to see if there's any, uh, any patterns uh, that I maybe might be able to figure out what other direction I might have what other direction might be a possible goal. But yeah, I'd be wrong about looking at that. Okay. So let's, let's say you're now looking to sell this market. We're now looking to sell this market. This market has gone this far. Let's move it. The market has gone this far. We haven't sold yet, but we're, we're about there. Right. In your head, guys, now be honest with yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. In your head, what are you thinking? It's going to keep on buying. It's going to keep on buying. I would think the same thing. Who agrees with him that it would keep on buying? Nah. If you didn't know yes. that what was about to happen, mm -hmm. would you not keep on buying? Not really. Oh, yes. You would, right? 
We are an RB level. When do you tell yourself, no, this is not a buying market? RB level. When you look at the higher time frame. When it creates equal highs. So what? Do you, okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for equal highs. We're looking for a rejection. I would look. I would look. I would look for the previous uh, order block in a higher time frame, and I will decide after that. Guys, we in a we in a we on a four hour chart. Where's your higher time frame? A daily, a weekly? Wait. Daily. A daily. A daily. Why not go to a smaller time frame? Why a higher time frame? High time frame shows direction. Because then you can see what it's been doing. For basically, you can see where it's been at, going up and down, checking where your support and resistance is, and seeing where your basically where your supply and demand is. Okay, so let's draw this out. This is our box. Agree with me? That's our box. This is where our emotions are at, correct? Yeah. That's where our emotions are at. Uh -huh. Now, let's see where more confirmation comes in. You think it's going to come in on a higher time frame or a lower time frame? Lower time frame. A lower time frame. The higher the time frame to confirm, then the lower time frame to substantiate what you're thinking on the higher time frame. So you probably okay. go check so, it out on like a 15 minute or a one hour. Okay. So I'm going to ask five of you guys to tell me which time frames to go to. 15 minutes. First person. What time frame do I go to? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Let's go to a 15 minute chart. Right. On the 15 minute chart is the box. Right? That's our box. So let's say this is the C now. It's still ranging. Yeah. What? What are your emotions telling you now? Remember, guys, this is all based on emotions. What are your emotions telling you now? Gotta wait for it to break out the box to confirm if it's a sell or not. If it doesn't break out the box, then I'm not going to sell them. We keep on buying. If it doesn't Fair break enough. out down. Fair enough. What box? What box? That box there? Yeah, the one that, well, basically where it's ranging, I'll draw my box and then I'll go and look for the next, for the, for the support, which would be just under there. So if you go up with your mouse, yeah. right over there. Once the touch is there, I'll wait and if it completely goes through that, then I'll start selling. Okay, so let's draw your, your line in. My question to you is, how are your emotions uh, right More now? down. No? Further down? More than down. Because sometimes it just gives a fake break out to catch you and then there? it shoots up. No, no more. Further down? So that's a fourth day. Yeah. So I'll wait for it to break through, retest, okay. and then I'll enter the cell if I was going for a cell. If it, read, if it goes down, touches, comes back up, I'll keep on buying until it confirms to me that it right. so I can see retest it keep on going down. And what are your emotions telling you to do? What What is your emotions telling you to do here? What game play are your emotions taking right now with you regarding this setup? Me. Marco, do you, do you mean if you, if you are already in a buy, are you asking that? No. Or you ask no. for... When you sell, you now, you now like, mm, mm, mm. they come to a new high, guys. Shit, you know, I want to get into this market. Your emotions are playing games on you. So your emotions. I think at this, at this point. So at the moment, I'm on the emotions. Hold on, one person at a time. Uh, you can go first. 
I'm sorry. I think at this point, uh, as a normal trader who probably doesn't know much, you would say sell, sell, sell. What do you see? Sell. Your emotions will tell you to sell at this moment. Okay. So you agree that he's selling the market? Yes. Yeah. What? So for me, this guy just paid for the full trade. Okay, hold on, hold on. How do you identify the sell here? How do you identify the sell here? Why would you be selling this market? Marco, what um, is telling you to sell the market? Come, guys. I would say that we have, we have like two highs, and then the market basically goes just above the previous well, high. market is moving sideways. The liquidity, and then it will drop, usually. I don't know if that's correct. Oh, it's a fair reply. But guys, you're still not answering my question. My question is, what are you thinking at this point in time that you want to get into this you want to get into the next movement because you can see that something's about to happen we've just created a new high what is going through your head guys be honest with yourself what is going through your head i can't help you if you're not honest with me i can't help you if you're not going to be honest with me what is going through your head right now that is the price action Right in front of you. That could be block. That is price action right now. now at, at this current point, what's going through your head? Double top. Double top. Yeah. Going high. It's not a double top. How many of you guys are buying this market? Be honest. No. How many of you guys are buying this market? You got an RB level. Me? So we have a three buyers. How many of you guys are no. I would never buy that high. Oh, this isn't. No, I thought this was live. Uh, this is now. Check the price now. So, no, I go back on the previous analysis because I thought I was comparing it to what I'm busy doing live. But no, now I would sell. But now remember. I would sell. No, but now, guys, be honest with yourselves. You didn't know the market was going to sell. We didn't know this was going to take place. We've just created a new high. What are you thinking? The market is buying. Buyer's market. There's a buyer's market. To fill this market. Why is it a seller's market? Let's debate it, guys. Why is it a buyer's market and why is it a seller's market? Uptrend. Well, I would say they want to grab liquidity, so they would. Oh. Everyone's going. Most of your retail traders will be buying now, so yeah. your institutions are like, okay, well, now's the time to wipe these guys out. They're all going to push in for the buy. Let's give them a fake exactly. out. Let's just go a bit up. Let's all jump, and then boom, we 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 hit the exactly. to fifty percent. Now we're thinking. Now we're thinking like that. That's what I wanted to hear. Now we're thinking like them. We're no longer thinking like retail traders. We're thinking like them. We know that there's a pool of liquidity at the top. That's why they created a new high. Right? They created a new high because everybody knows that once a new high is 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 created, that's the end of that impulse. And we can then see a correction in that market before a new impulse, correct? Yes, correct. Correct. Now, this is exactly how they are thinking. Exactly what you said. They know that you've got your breakout traders that are just waiting to give that breakout, right? Or Trend line. we've got those traders that are just buying at that level of resistance. Because the market has created a new high, who's buying? The retail traders. So Why? Because sorry, who's 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 selling the market? Sorry about that. Who's selling the market? The retail traders. Why? Because they've learned to buy the market when it's high and sorry, sell the market when it's high and buy the market when it's low. No, no, no. You buy the highs. Sorry, you sell the highs. You buy the lows. That's retail trading for you, mm. right? Now. 
Now we start seeing this happen. What's your thoughts on the market now? It's going to break down. Okay. So now we know that we are no longer part of the retail traders. Right? We're no longer part of the retail traders. We are now working with passing this low. Are we really? Are, are, are we working on this low? Are we working on this low? Where are we waiting to take our trade? We need to enter, guys. We need to enter this trade. Where are we entering? Where are we entering? So I would have waited for it to. I would have not obviously. I was, so when I gave you that. Um, the, Support there. I was working on my live. So I'm actually currently trading now. I would move it a bit up, and then I'd wait for it to break through to retest and confirm, and then I'll enter. Wait, there? No, but there. Yeah. Why there? That for me that is worth okay. So where you go in if you if you zoom in, you'd see where it was ranging before the actual move started. Yeah. So they on your left. On your left where that small little mount where basically where they were waiting to decide what they were gonna do. Then they pushed the price up, came down, pushed it up again, and now they're waiting. So I'd, about that yeah, so I'd say they're coming back again today, and then from there they would decide, okay, now we're going to push it down, or we're going to give them a fake out to the top, make them think it's going up, and then sell. Okay. Guys, this level becomes what now? A what? That is resistance. Okay. ICT, we don't use resistance. What do we use? Supply and demand. Liquidation zone. Well, yeah. Liquidation zone and uh, supply zone. So this would now be my zone. Agreed? Oh. Yeah. yeah. There. Right. So now, now that I've got this confirmation, what's my next step? What am I looking for? I still have not entered. I still have not gotten an entry. Now, one is saying we're retesting this level. Or we're waiting for them to make a decision at this level. How many of you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. I do agree with that. Okay. Now, what happens when the market comes back to this level? What are we expecting? Guys, what happens when a market comes back to a supply zone? What are we expecting? For it to drop. And when it drops, what does it find? Demand. Correct. Right. So now, we're waiting for supply to find demand. But we need supply to first come into, tap into that level of supply in order for it to find demand. Right. So, as price goes, you were saying we're going to see a decision being made. Right. Yes. Right. Guys, there's a retest. At a level of support. resistance. Huh? Yes, support, but again, also resistance turns into support. Yes. What are your emotions now? How are your emotions now? What are your emotions telling you? What is happening? You haven't entered the market yet. What do you want to do? What are you what are you thinking of doing? Your emotions are playing games with you now. They tell you. I was impatient and I saw it, uh, it respected that resistance but I've ended for a buy. Great. You lose your honest. So you would have ended for a buy. 
Yeah. Right. So, how many of you guys are with him that you would have ended with a bye? Nah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree too. So nobody's really selling the market anymore. We're now <laughs> believing that the market is going to break this previous high and create a higher high. Correct? <clears throat> For me, I wouldn't look at it like that. I would have seen, okay, uh, it, um, it, it respected the resistance. Mm-hmm. But it hasn't confirmed the full new move because it's still it's not it's it's not ranging and up and hasn't broken a box. I've ever seen that as a scalping opportunity instead of a swing. I yeah, it's just been tricked a bit. Okay, so how many buys do we have? I would be buying. That's one. Uh, we, I would be buying. <laughs> I would be buying. I would be buying. Buy. Bob. Copy buying. Thanks. How many of you are just gonna sit on your hands and do nothing? Me, I'll wait for the sale day. I would I will wait. I won't do anything. I will wait too. Why are you I'm waiting? Buying. You're buying. So you've got buyers and you've got sellers in this house. Beautiful. We all know that the market should come back to this level, right? Yeah. Are you waiting for that? No, I would. Uh, I would have taken partials halfway already because I'm still waiting for it to confirm that. Uh, I'm still waiting for that drop. So I would have taken profit off partial profits, and then I would have set my. That normally, I set my um, stop loss to entry then, and then I would. Okay. If it went to the break up. Then I think the further if it comes, it's a stop loss, I break even and then wait for the down movement. Okay. Oh. I would wait. I would wait because um, the market is still, I think it's still in, in consolidation and in that box, there is not much that, unless if you want to, uh, you call, scalp, but at this moment, I would wait. Why have none of you guys mentioned the higher time frame? Because we already looked at it previously. But we just got previous data. New data. Let's see this box on our highest time frame. Oh, why doesn't this guy just get bored? This paint a better picture for you. Now what yeah. you be doing? Just get bar replay done. Look, oh, it's been 15 minutes. Yeah, some, I would some pay for. For subscription. What? I was still, I was still, uh, scalp paid. And then still wait for the move. Because it still hasn't confirmed the up or down yet on that. How many guys, how many of you guys would be selling? Looking at that. I wouldn't sell yet. Why not, sir? Because, uh, market, because that hasn't confirmed the sell for me yet. It can, you can enter the sell there, and then they decide, okay, we're going to take a back up to the support, and then like, oh, shit, I've already lost so much. Close. And then when you close up there, then they're like, okay, thank you. We've taken your money now. We will drop it back down. You're like, fuck. I should it's, have making, kept it. it's making higher highs and higher lows. So I would never Structure hasn't broken. broken. Making yeah, higher highs and higher lows, right? Yeah, correct. If it's making higher highs and higher lows, we're expecting it to make a high high. Yep. Right. right? So everybody would be buying. I would have been buying. Yeah. Right. Let's go to a four-hour chart. And where are we? We're up there. Probably getting what we're getting at. Hey, okay. probably looking at that now, right? What are you thinking? Okay. Look at that chart carefully. Look at that chart carefully, yeah. 
Uh, on 13.18, just before the consolidation, they, uh, could we say that's an uh, order block? Everything above is a buy, everything below is a sell. You could say that. Well, I could say that. But my trading and your trading are not the same. What are you I would sell all, because it hasn't confirmed the sell to me yet. So I'd sell all the buy. So you still hold your buy? Yeah. So we're holding buys until where's our confirmation? So as I said, I will take. I would have taken partial profits at fifty percent of that on the way back up to support. Set my um, stop loss to entry, and then once it comes back down and it hits my stop loss and breaks through and comes back up to retest, then I confirm my okay, so. case. Okay. Now, guys, is it only me or do you see equalos? Yeah, they're not lower, 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 they are higher, they're all equal, basically. Great. What does it mean when we have equalos? Range. Bye. Right? After. Mm. It means buy. Everybody agree? It's a ranging market. Yes. No, I don't know. It's well, take for rules, it means buy. So we all know that we've got perfectly equal lows, right? So we're going to buy. But where are you buying to? I have no idea about that. If you buy from the equal low, you buy to the supply zone. Correct. So now, look at how this works out. Now we buy into the supply zone. Supply. Then that happens. What's your emotion telling you? What, what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you now you like, what the hell? What the hell? Right? Right? Yeah. Now what? Now what are you thinking? Because now you bought. To get out of the buy because of the resistance. Okay. So, <coughs> as I said, I would have set a, a break even. So, the okay. stop loss gone down. But now, I would go down to a lower time frame. To see if it's respect, if it's turning that um, support into resistance or not, guys. Why didn't you? Why didn't you look at this price action on a lower time frame? Why wouldn't you look at this time? Why won't you look at this price action on a lower time frame? Can I ask you something, Michael? Yeah. At this moment, uh, for me, uh, I think if I had bought, I would not have held until there's a supply zone. I would have held until 50% or until the mitigation somewhere. Mm -hmm. Then, after that, I will take my profit, maybe half of my profit. Then, if I held, if I had held my, 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 my position, when it drops below the the, the 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 equal the previous equal uh equal what you call equal high yeah. I mean equal low I mean yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah I would have held because I would know that it's probably a manipulation of the market. Now guys, let me show you something. Who wants to see what this candle data holds? You guys want to be shocked. Go to fifteen minutes. I want to see. Yeah, show us. 15 minutes. This is good for one hour. 15 and minutes. And look at what that candle alone, what data it was holding. So what are you doing? So down now. Let's just now. Is this supposed to be top 10 analysis? You can see what happened here. 
double top break retest where exactly looks like they tried to trap the buyers exactly so why the hell would you be buying And then she's still trading like retail traders. Give us an example of how they try to shut the buyers, please. So you see before the down movement, you'll see the buy candle, green, the bullish candle there. What happened is they went down, it's still coming up, guys. It's all okay, cool. There's now our long now that is going up. It's gonna turn into a buy. People pumped in, and then they just dropped it. Like if you see the the biggest drop happened, the biggest bearish happened. Let me show you something. Immediately after that, everybody was, everybody was buying. Everybody was buying at that retest, mm -hmm. right? Everybody was buying, yeah. right? And as soon as the market came down, yeah, everybody was selling. Buyers got taken out. And everybody who was trying to sell the market got taken out over here. Can you all see that? Mm. So you bought the market, they took you out. You sold the market, they still took you out. So now how do we how do we kind of like, you know, I don't know, make sure we don't get into such situations? Guys, waiting for the confirmation. Where's the confirmation? Break out and retest. A what? Break out and a retest. Why break out and a retest? Let's go to a lower time frame. Now, what is this showing you? Remember, that was one big dark candle. What is it showing you now? What happened here, guys? I suppose here. What happened? I say it's like a construction box. The price, uh, the candles are small, all are small. There was a decision making there. Exactly. And can you see it exactly? At 50% uh, mitigation, the market fell. Guys, what I'm trying to tell you is you need to look at your time frame. Don't just look at a big candle on a one hour and say, oh my gosh, that candle is going down. Look at what happened in that, that candle. That way these guys won't play with your emotions. You understand? They wouldn't have played with my emotions yet. I would have known what to do. And I feel like everybody else now would have known what to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Who was going to buy this market? <coughs> Nobody. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now my question is, what is still to come? What is still to come? What are we still waiting for? We've created a we've created a new high. What are we waiting for, guys? So we're we waiting for play you can go. So I think a big move to the upside. Okay. Let's see. The market continues and then... There we go. 
What happened here, guys? What do we call this? It's an expansion that we call. Consolidation. We can now take this away. No longer valid. So these are levels. Can everybody see that? There's the puzzle's coming together. Can you all see that? Yeah. Yes. Everybody see how this puzzle's coming together. So, now, we all saw that at this level, right, at the mitigation phase, the market fell. We now had a contraction box. What happened at this level? Decisions was made. A decision was being made. Mm. Right? They then pushed price lower. They decided, they said, okay, fine. Are we going to buy price at this level? No, we're not. Are we buying price at this level? No, we're not. Bank said, okay, fine. Can you buy price at this level? No, we're not. The bank said, okay, this is our final offer. We can't go any lower than that. Fine, we'll buy price at this level. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So does everybody understand how this works? The lower, you see, the movement really happened. The movement actually happened over here. But they made the final decision over here. But they had already agreed on price at this level. They really agreed on price here. And then the confirmation came in over here. Um, what do you think was Exactly. Who do you think was stepping in over here? Institutions. Smart yes, money. Is. Exactly. Hedge funds, investments, investors, all of them, they're all stepping in over here. But now, again, what are we still waiting for? A retest. A retest to Rise to come back. Supply. We are waiting for price to come back where business back starts. to supply. Mm. Price still needs to come back to the supply zone. Okay. And if supply, if supply don't turn into demand, then I will sell down. All right. Now I'll look what happened. Can you see how this level keeps getting restricted? This level keeps getting guys coming in and making decisions. And you see that at this exact level, even if we didn't draw this box in, the market still respected where price started, all the way from down there, where price started, and they moved price back up to supply. Back up to supply. Right? Now, we can see that again at this level, we've got a reaction. What happened? Back up into supply. Supply again. The supply zone. 
So every time it got into the supply zone, what were you doing? Selling. Selling off. No, but what were you doing? You were putting in a sell position. Yes. Everybody with me? Mm. Yes. Uh. Right. Now, if we went to a higher time frame, we can now see what took place. They made the decision over here, they pushed price up. Made a decision over here, push price down. Made a decision over here, push price up. Made a decision over here, push price up. But your main, your main movement was the supply zone. Why did we know that they were going to come back here? What was waiting here for them that they would never leave? Money. It's the quality orders was there. Unfair exactly. price. Unfair price was. Because you know what? Me, you, everybody, we were all trying to sell at these levels. And we did. Right? We sold. But now, we, if we are not trading our stock losses, where's our stops? We bought over here, where's our stops? It will take somewhere over there, another one probably, if we were buying over here, stop loss plus minus, somewhere over there. Right? So now, what were we looking for? What, what can you see, guys? What did we see over here that we're seeing now over here? Come on, guys. They picked up liquidity. No. What is happening it's over just, here? It is the, the seller starting to buy. Okay. Equal, equal high. Exactly. Equal high. That's all we were looking for. That's all we were looking for was equal highs. I didn't care about anything else. My supply zone was complete when I got equal highs. And the highest candle, right? The highest candle to my order block, right? The highest candle to my order block came in to complete that level of supply. We have an order block. That next candle is equal to my previous order block. Mm. Make sense? Who's with me here? Had an order block over here. My previous candle came right up to where my previous order block was. At my supply zone. This automatically told me that I'm selling off the market. My order block, my supply zone was complete. I had equal highs, and the fact that my order blocks met the supply zone, that was a perfect acknowledgement that, listen, we are selling this market now. I'm not even waiting for a retest, nothing. I am selling this market, and that's when I get a sniper entry. I enter right there. I'm like, I am selling this market. Why, right? Because I have so much confirmation. I have so much confirmation. It only made sense that these guys wanted to continue to come over here because we had a whole massive pool of liquidity and every time they came in here, everybody started to sell, right? But not once, not once did they give us equal highs. Mm. Not yeah. once did they give us equal highs. And then all of a sudden, the measurement of my order block is the equal high to my downfall. And from there, that was the end of it. 
I remember you. I remember um, um, argument with Sasson about it. He said he's gonna buy, he's gonna buy, then you told him, ha, let's see what happens if you buy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this move like it was yesterday, Marco. But can everybody see that how going through different time frames showed me different data and different data played a different role in my setup? Mm. But what played the biggest role? Supply zone, I would say. No, but what I'm saying, what played the biggest role here? My thinking, my emotions. Mm. You understand? Because at this level, I was buying. But my my emotions weren't being played around with because I knew that I needed to come back to my supply zone. So I was ready for this, regardless. Mm. I was ready for this. I was even ready to buy from level to level, level to level, level to level, until my supply zone was matched. And once I got those equal highs, it was over. I was selling. Session was buying. It is what it is. And that was that. But guys, can you all see how all these different pieces of the puzzle came together at your Biggest, your biggest downfall over here was your psychology. Because so it was me again, my psychology. So now I've now, especially now with um, the last, let's say, two weeks, I'll, I'll catch the, the scalping. So I'll build up nice liquidity in between and build my account. And then I always, for some, like, just because I doubt the move, I end up missing the big move. And I catch all the little moves, but then I end up missing the big move because I doubt my, my setup. Why? Because I, I let the little moves try. I, then I start looking at the little moves I'm doing, and it ends up, changing my thinking where if I stuck to the original move and I didn't factor in the little scalp you know, I'm doing in between, yeah, that's what ends up changing. And then I like, go okay, wait, let me hold. And by the time I confirm, then it's too late and the moves are basically 50% of the moves that happened and then I catch the last 50% of it. Okay. Right. What happened here? It was a demand zone turning to supply. Exactly. What happened there? What happened then? Demand was a, was a feeding supply, I would say. So the demand turned to supply. Yeah. And you see how all of this can help you. Yeah, that's why you posted buy until thirteen four hundred because if you see there is another another well demand to turn to supply and then dump. Yes. Yeah. But can you see that how simple things just like this equal highs and equal lows. Here we had equal lows. Mm. Market went up. At that same level, we got the retest and market dumped. Equal highs, market fell. Simple, simple, simple things. So if like with that big dump, like with that big dump that happened there, yeah. that, that dump are any court halfway. Because so I was scalping in between, and then I was like, ah, and then when I saw it break, I thought, okay, cool, it went up, it's going to retest, and then I waited for it to come down to confirm, and then it just kept on dropping, and I jumped in, like I said, only caught 50% of it, where I would have made a lot more, and I would have had a safer entry if I stuck to the original move. I want to show you guys something. Who can see equal lows? 
The fact yeah, that I draw it out, who can yeah, see your nose? There where your arrow is just to the right, let's see. And down, yeah. There, there. Oh, what happened it. at that I... level? It was uh, uh, res support turned into resistance, or resistance turned into support, I would say. But what happened? I was respected. What was this? It was a level where supply turned into? Oh, I don't see any of that. The moment. Exactly. What do we have here? We had them make a decision, and at this exact level, we got our equal lows. But not only that, our supply turned into demand, right, to the downside. And where did this all happen? Where did this all happen? Look at that, guys. It all uh, happened when business started. Business started. Mm. So can you see I had one confirmation, right? One confirmation. Let's say I was going to take it. Let's say, let's say I took this trade over here, right? We're now waiting for this market to come back into this zone in order to sell it off, right? Right? So we're waiting for supply to come back into demand and then automatically will then sell off, which happened right over here. However, though, However, though, as much as that happened, right? What happened over here? What is this? What is that, guys? Zone. Guys, say something. Mm. We knew that the minute the supply zone came back to to um, tap into this level. We would then done. And the minute from this level, the market came back into that level once again, the market would drop. Um, it's not that difficult. Okay. Mm. They're making more sense. Mm. Yeah. So all we were waiting for, really, was this movement to finish. And obviously played around here, right? But the main movement that we were waiting for was the supply zone... Um, for our indication to sell. I would say the biggest issue with that whole move was just being able to sit on your hands and wait. Psychology. And not being patient. Yeah, psychology. This is what this class is all about. Psychology. Learning when to get into the market and learning when to wait. And learning to not get over welcomed by your emotions. Oh my gosh, 
Oh my God, there's going to be a buy. I want to get in. No, just sit on your damn hands. Oh my God, it's going to be a sell. Just sit on your damn hands. So something that's been working for me as well since I joined you is uh, I set notifications instead of watching the chart all the time because that's when I start catching on shit when I keep on watching the chart. That works. I'll set notifications that when it gets closer to a level that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. then I'll start watching the chart. Fair enough. Because Mark doesn't pay for the full guys trading you. So he doesn't know what you're talking about. This is all I was waiting for. Right? We saw that this market came into this supply zone. That all I was waiting for was for the market to come back into that supply zone. Even if I sold over here, even if I sold over here, Right? I still would have sold the market. But what do we all know? The first touch is never the real move. It's always the second move that we will take seriously. Okay, so once it gets to the supply zone, we're going to drop on lower time frames. Where do we enter specifically? All right, nice question. Let me show you. Um, so, fifteen minutes. What you what you want to do, right? What you want to do is <coughs> when you're at a five minute chart, right? What you're looking for is that same area, this exact same area, right? This exact same area. What are we waiting mm -hmm. for? We're waiting for any level of resistance to turn to support. Okay. Sorry, okay. sorry, no, no, sorry. Any resistance, resistance should turn into resistance, basically. So, what? let's say the market went up, came down, went up, right? Mm. We, what we were looking for was a level like this. Well, that, this is previous data, gosh. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's where we would have entered. Okay. But can you see we didn't get equal highs? Yes. So this is already telling me that the market's not going to sink. Mm -hmm. Can you see how this how can you see how they talk to you? Can you okay. see how the language talks to you? We, we can already see that they're not going to sink. Right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to think why, because they haven't identified it. We're looking for certain movement, certain patterns within our understanding of what this market oh my God. should be doing and should not be doing in order for us to take a trade. So let's go to a... One hour chart. Let's just go to those equal highs quickly so we can mark them in and we can show you what we would have looked for at this exact level. So we would have had our equal highs and at this nice. level. Now look for an entry. So now, right, we could have entered 
the minute it came to pick up liquidity, the minute it came to pick up liquidity, right? All I'm waiting for is it to break the low. Okay. The last known low. It broke that low, created a low, created another low. The fact that it broke that low, I was in. Forget what was happening over here. I'm here. Mm. Five minutes. This low gets broken. I enter. No questions asked. I'm waiting for a simple piece of structure to, to be violated. That's it. A simple piece of structure to be violated. And because I've had my equal highs and I've had so many more confirmations, right? This is just the tip of the iceberg to get in. Mm. Marco, are you explaining an entry point now? Because yes. I had a broken transmission now and I didn't hear anything. Yes. <laughs> so, so I was saying that all we can, all we're waiting for is a low, a, a piece of structure to be broken. That's it. Mm. I'm looking for nothing more. So the minute the market went up, right? The market, the market created a low, went up, created a low, went up, created an even higher low, went up, created an even higher low, right? So what was I waiting for? This low to be broken. That low was then retested. Mm -hmm. I had to be here, and that would have been my entry. And that was that. The race was freaking history. Interesting. You want to see what was what what was actually happening over here? Let me jump to a smaller time frame. Take a long time to go to where we were. Why is it so slow though? I like trading these days. Is it just me or is trading view like really slow? That's what's slow. I can't even see the rest of the data. Where's the rest of the data? It's one minute, bro. Where is it? Oh wow. So much good training here. <laughs> sure. Training view is trash. It's fucking one minute. What do you expect? I can't that that far. So that was my entry right there. We broke the low, mm. came back, retested the low, and we didn't fall. Okay. You with me? Mm. Everybody with me? Yeah. Did you enter at the third candle or the, yeah. the second one? To be honest, to be honest, when I took the sell and everybody who was there with me knew that I entered at that liquidity grab. Hmm. You could have entered on a higher time frame, uh, like a 15 minutes, but I prefer the five minute chart definitely for entry. But the minute the market came down to reject this, automatically knew that they were picking up. 
a lot of liquidity. And the only reason, the only reason they actually did the second move, so this was the first move, why do you think they came back and spiked up? They'd already picked up liquidity. Hmm. What happened? Look carefully, guys. What happened? The buyers thought the market was going higher, so they stopped them out. Take out and True. take out sellers' stop losses. Yeah. So they true. don't drive the right away wave with them. So you were buying. Stops get taken out. First time. You sell. Stops get taken out second time. But not only that. What else? What did they need to do in order to dump? No, what did they need to do in order to dump? What had to have happened? Price needed to become fair. Balance, right. Price needed to be fair in order for them never to come back to that lever again. And that's what happened. Michael? Yeah? Sorry. You see that spike where you said that's where you entered? There where the price was uh, becoming fair, correcting to be fair? Yes. Where you said you entered? Yeah. I sometimes I sometimes check the market and uh, wonder if it's wise for for me to wait for that spike and then enter, just that I wouldn't know when to enter. But most of the time I would want to enter at that point. But I would. Uh, run well, out. you must you must you must always take into consideration that they would never leave, especially on a lower time frame. They would never leave price to be unfair because. Automatically, this means that they need to come back up to this level. So why come up to this level? Like I said, this was the liquidity grab, right? This was the liquidity grab. This was the first move, yeah. right? This was the first move. That was the second move. Which move was real? Second. The exactly. second one. The same as this on the higher time frame. It mm -hmm. wasn't the first move, it was the second movement that dropped the market, that pushed the market down. So you need to look at, if we have imbalance at this level, when the market, let's say we saw this happening now, right? We automatically knew that there was another movement to take place. They could not have dropped. There was imbalance in the market. They would mm -hmm. never allow such so what happens? The market needed to come up, clear out that imbalance, and then jump. Mm. Because then regardless, right, regardless, we had imbalance over here. We have imbalance, geez, we have imbalance all over here. They didn't tap into the imbalance and a lot of a lot more imbalance, but sooner or later we knew that they would, right? Mm -hmm. We knew that they would. Just a matter of time before they come back to clear out. It's imbalance. You understand? Yeah. It's just a matter of time. But so we automatically know that that's why I said, you know, they would come to fourteen thousand, give or take. Because Anything above that is irrelevant to them. There's no imbalance. If they wanted to make the market fair, 
that we need to come to this level. Okay. You heard me? Yes. So part of what you're saying when it comes to entry is uh, there. after looking at that Asia imbalance on this time frame. So in, in, in terms of entering, you're also going to look at the imbalance aspect of it and not only the lows or highs being broken. No. Hmm. You're looking at why, you, like I said, you need to think like them. Why, hmm. why, would they, why would they go out there? What is their reason? I mean, if they're not going to fall, why are they going up? What is there? There's money. This is money, guys. This is money. This is money for them. The more imbalance there is in the market, the more money there is. Because you must remember, those are orders. Those are insufficient orders. Insufficient order flow is at that level. Insufficient price, unfair prices at that level. And we're not talking about we're not talking about a few hundred rands or a few hundred thousand rands. No, we're talking about a few trillions. Mm. You understand, but because yeah. as they started to fall, they created more and more imbalance. Mm -hmm. So the only thing left for them to do is basically come back up. And after coming back up, right. After coming back up, we can see now that as they came down, well, they've created a whole lot more imbalance. Okay, so we can could even mark this one out now because they probably won't even come to that level yet. So now if we look, right, what are we looking at? We're looking at this level. Right? Well, not yet, not yet. So right now we don't really have imbalance over here, right? But if we look, if we look further down, there's insufficient price. Um, there's insufficient price. That price was cleared up. Um, we've got some unfair price over here. And I'll probably come tap into um, that unfair price over here was cleared out. Do you understand? So now we can see where they're most likely going to go to. Hmm. Right? So for now, we can say that they're going to come down to probably this level, right? Clear out that price before going higher. However, though, however, though, where else do we have insufficient price? I'm coming here. This is where you're coming. Over there. Coming here. Where else? Um, and I'm there. It's not perfect, but yeah, you get an you, you understand. So, Marco, the way I see it, you, you are marking all these big institutional candles out, all these big bearish yes. and these big bullish candles. Yeah. So that is, what, that is what you're also looking at. If you're going to swing this trade deck, where will the return point be? Either the order block or the order imbalancing, I would say. Yes. But that's what we're looking for. We're looking for as much confirmation as possible. And these guys will give it to us if we just look. You understand? Yes, I was looking at the, 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 the mentorship where you were posting these things, but I didn't understand it really. But now that you explain it, it makes more sense now. Who can explain to me what imbalance is? 
can be little out of the way. Unfair, unfair, unfair price. price how do we join? Okay, how do we join in? When, when two, when two, it's a connection between two weeks that separates a body candle. Just like I joined them in here. Yeah. Correct. Now, why? The, you see, that's the thing. The market doesn't like things like this. The market hates it. Price must be fair for everybody. Now, when we say unfair price, what does it mean when we say unfair price? Buyers and sellers are not equal. Correct. Meaning that at this level, sellers have more opportunity to get in to a point where buyers and their orders were neglected. Understand? So we now have orders over here and orders filling up over here and orders down here and orders down here and orders down here and more and more orders down here. So in order to make it fair, those orders need to be connected. The question is, are they going up, then down, or are they going down, then up? Going down, then up. Mm. However, though, however, though, it's down, then up. One of the two has happened. Because at this level, we can then expect the market to dump. Okay, I can see. That. Everybody is saying, "Yo, Nasdaq is going for a high." If we go you are wasting your time. The minute, the minute Nasdaq can bounce off this level, I will say yes. But as long as they go up, creating inefficient price, it will still need to come back down before going back up. Have you realized that when the market goes up, it makes sure that it takes out all the unfair price before creating a new high? Go look at any new high created. You will find no imbalance to the outside. Nothing. It would have cleared it all out. So, right, just to be fair, so price has to be for uh, uh to be fair be, uh, before it can move any further. Right, it doesn't help for a market to be um, imbalanced because then um, you must remember now that if a market is imbalanced then we'll obviously have conflict now because you now have buyers that will be saying, well, you know what, our orders weren't fulfilled. Um, we've got investors, we've got hedge funds. Guys, it's not going to happen. They will definitely come and collect those orders. Even if that's to consolidate for a whole damn month, and those orders will be collected. So now... Now that you, you see, now, now that we can see where the market wants to go, this is just in a, a direction. So now we can say, okay, fine. So we're going to mark out. That level. And this level. And now, this level. 
is actually A. Right. Right? You with me? Mm -hmm. So if the market yeah. comes back, the market so needs to come back to this level, and get done. So now you tell yourself, okay, fine, I'm sitting on my hands until the market comes back down to this level, or you put in your sell orders, or sell stop orders, sorry, sell stop orders, and as soon as the market comes to this level, you are now triggered. So limit. Right? Yeah. Why? Who can see what happened at this level? What happened at this level? Every time so limit. market got to this damn level, what happened? It's sold. Guys, look at that. It either buy or it sell. Either bought or it's sold. Yes. Right. Now we have that level. What happened at that level? I want to tell you, I want to. I want, I want you guys to understand why I'm saying we will buy to 14,000 once it hits 13,500. Now, what happened at that level? At that level, it, it, it sailed from the supply zone. Nothing, nothing more than something happened at that level. Sellers have taken control of that whole supply zone, correct? Yes. Yes. Right. So now, if this wasn't the outcome, then the only other thing that can happen is the skies. Can you see why now I say at the bounds at a level as such, right? It only makes sense now, right? Because we've got inefficient price, we've got orders that need to be collected. So this could very well happen while they come and close off price. So we came in from this level, market fell. Came into this level, came into this level, might go into this level, might come up into this level, might go back down into this level, I mean, yeah. Oh guys. Yeah. And at this level, so basically we have a W and then we have an M. But can you see how once you learn what the market is actually going to do and we're no longer trading like retail traders, we can actually already tell what the market is probably going to do within the next week or so. Can you all see that? Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 We can see where the market would want to come to, right? There's not much of a choice. We dumped at this level. 
if we jump at this level, it's only a matter of time before we come back to this level. With me. Yes. But now, obviously that's not going to be the complete movement. We obviously know that. We know how the market works. So, could it be history repeating itself where the market will come in down to this movement? Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? Up. Down. And there you can see 13,500 up to 14,000. Great call. We had W. We had M. What else? What do you see here, guys? See head and shoulders. Correct. What else? Double bottom. Correct. What else? Can you guys send me confirmation you're getting from this? Can you guys see where we are going with this? Can you see how this helps you? Because you now have an understanding of how this market works. Your, your, your emotions are no longer being played with because you now know that, you know, these guys are probably going to do this before they do that. And do this before they do that. You with me? Yeah. You guys learned something today. A lot. Yeah, always learn something new. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my biggest concern for everybody in most of the groups is the psychology. And you guys are already here. You see, that's the issue. You see, the people who move to the advanced group might not have the psychology. You guys came to the right place because you guys are going to understand how these guys are going to play with your emotions. Because you see, the guys in the advanced group will want to be... Yes, tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll take them through white off and everything. But it doesn't help me taking you through white off if you can't even pull the trigger on the trade. No, I can't think about the swing running. So right at the bottom there, we had one, two, and one, two, six. I entered at one, two, nine, five, zero. Just as well as I'm still holding that. Mm-hmm. I'm holding it all the way up to that uh, to one one four. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, so I've, uh, that's what I've I've actually perfected that now. Swing trading, it's now just getting this uh, interday trading, more the daily trading. Yeah, getting that right. But you see now, it it still comes down to entry. And you see, yeah. entry, entry is not shown in an advanced class. You should already know entry. <clears throat> you should already know psychology. Yeah, so I so, that, that was the beginning of the Yeah, 
That's why a lot of the guys went to the beginner class. Because they knew that now they're going to learn everything over again, right? But obviously with no interactions. No back and forth. We can get through this, get it over and done with and move on. Yeah. We're going to be the most successful group uh, in the whole three groups. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. You know why? Because you guys are learning psychology. You guys are learning, you know, how to make sure these fucking institutions and banks and these market movers don't play with your emotions. The advanced group is going to learn wipe off, yay, great, but they're not going to learn how to control the emotions. That also happens in this group. I think for me also, Marco, I was frustrated over the last few weeks, I would say, is not getting my entries right. And last week, I started to see things now in a different way. And what it does, actually, it makes me calm now. I don't wake up in the morning and want to take a trade, want to take a trade. I need to see where the market is. That is where I would say my psychology is moving away from me because I'm not rushing the market anymore. Yeah, you're waiting for the market to come to you. Yes, it is frustrated in the sense that you can't pull the trigger, I would say. If you pull the trigger, you buy, the market sell. If you sell, the market buy. What? If you can't get rid of that thing, then your emotions will not get rid of you. Sure. 100%. But that's the thing. So, but at the end of the day, if you think about this, if we just waited and sat on our hands, would we have the emotions if we knew that we just waited for the moment to get to this level? Would we have emotions? No. We have emotions if we knew that we're just waiting for the market to get to this level. We have emotions. No. We have emotions if we were waiting for the market to get to this level. And then this level. We have emotions. Well, because you know now how the market should play out now. There we go. When you don't know what the market's going to do, that's when you have emotions. Because now you're stumbling and you're like, oh my gosh, what? What the hell is the market doing? What the hell is this, man? I was buying, I was selling. This is bullshit. It's a scam. <laughs> More like gambling. Yeah. Why? It is a gamble if you don't know what the hell you're doing. 100%. You can't go play blackjack if you don't know how to play blackjack. You can't go... And and, to, 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 and and gamble. I mean, I can't go and, and, and gamble away my house or houses or properties unless unless I knew what I was doing. Otherwise, it's a gamble. You understand? Otherwise, there's no risk management. Now, obviously, we'll get into risk management in the next session, but at the end of the day... Um, we need to get over the fact that you cannot be scared of a market. Stop running to the damn market. Let the market run to you. Let the market run to you. This is you. This is you. So, is Marco, you. I just want to ask you. This is you. Let the market come to you. I just want to ask some advice here, right? Hmm? So this morning, I took a, actually from Friday, I took a long on gold. So I ended up with 50 grand in my account. So yeah. I closed it off this morning. And then what happened was, I said, I'm not going to trade for the rest of the week because I'm ready to start. Okay. So I started marking out levels on NASDAQ, you know, what it's going to do and what it's not going to do and everything. But now I've been watching the market and I've been trying to see, okay, what's the market going to do without trading? Is that a good strategy to keep? So basically, to just to just to help with patience, or would I rather no. to get into a demo and start doing it a demo? No, because you're gonna you're gonna start having a fear of missing out. Yes, yes, that's what I want to control. 
So then you shouldn't be on the charts. Okay. If you hit your targets, right. close your laptop and don't look at it for the rest of the week. Oh, okay. that way, right. that way you're not strengthening your mindsets mm-hmm. to a point where you now know that if I do one, two, three, and I hit my target, I don't trade the rest of the week. I see. I see. So even during this, 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 uh, this learning stages of ours, it's not, not because I'm doing it more like now, as if now I'm learning, not. Uh, how do I say? Uh, it's no, going, it's you, going to start practice. That's where you're playing a match, basically. Yeah, that doesn't help because now you want to play the match. Mm, I get what you're you want it. You want. You want to start kicking the damn ball. Mm, 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 you understand? Yeah. And yeah. that's the problem. When it, it gets to a point where it becomes so addictive that you can't help but get into the market. Mm, mm, okay. So that needs to get taken away. Okay. You understand? And All that's right. where, and that's where now your risk management plan comes into play. But I'll go over that in the next session, so you can then see how to actually um, work around such situations. Okay. Where risk is now being taken, where risk is now being taken to a point where it's risk that you can't take, but yet want to take. And again, it's more psychological. Okay, thanks, buddy. Thanks for that. No stress. Any questions, guys? Questions? So, everybody understands everything. Absolutely. I have a question. I want to know, when you wake up in the morning and you see a setup, do you take that trade or you wait for market open at half past three? What? Man, I can trade at 5 a.m. Never mind, fucking half past three. <laughs> Nobody has time for half past three, man. <laughs> I mean, wait, waiting for the U.S. open, please. Man. Yeah. What? That makes no sense. No, no, no. What you do is when, when you analyze, you will see where there's a possibility for a setup. That could take place in the Asian setup. That, that, that could only open up a door in Asian session yeah. or London open. You understand? So I can't yeah. wait for the U.S. open. Just because I'm, because I'm trading NASDAQ based on U.S., it doesn't mean that um, I have to wait for the U.S. open. Obviously, it's going to become a lot more vulnerable and it's going to become a lot more... Um, how can I say this? Like, um, well, it's a, what's the word I want to use here? Like, it's going to be a lot more, how can I say? Like, like, yeah, like you're going to, you're going to, you're going to see a lot more volume. There we go. Yeah. Basically, you're going to see a lot more volume in the US Open. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. Because it's a US market. Exactly. And I said, because it's a U.S. market, you're going to see a lot more volume. And it's just like I said, you see, just before they want to close, just before they want to close, they want to come clear that imbalance. I knew it. Look at what's happening there, guys. Mm. Can you see that? Yeah. They want to clear that imbalance before they can do anything in the Asian Open. So they'll clear imbalance piece by piece. What I've noticed at, at like 3 that even when the market opens is that you'll get that initial push, that, that impulse neck, and, and maybe it'll be like three candles on a 15-minute time frame or maybe three candles on a one-hour time frame, and you'll get a lot of imbalance, and then immediately you'll get that, that pullback, which is obviously the price coming back to full and yes. make price... Even so, like yes. that's that's often times when I get in because I know like I'm off. I get that push on that nice long imbalance candles, and I know I can take advantage on on, on a pullback on those because obviously price will be returning obviously to uh, you know come back to its in the Kenya. Yeah, but now can you see? Can you see that because the markets are about to close, they need to make price even. So that when Asia comes in, 
for the ascension, price is fair. Because mm. it doesn't help for them to come in and then there's unfair price in the market. So they'd rather make price fair so that when Asia comes in, you know, price is fair. There's no conflict. Price is fair. I hope I've made a lot of sense, guys. I hope you guys have taken notes and I hope you've learned. And I hope you guys know go out there. Yeah. When you were starting up, in your learning process, when you back testing a lot, or you're focusing more on structure, uh, I was back testing everything. Okay. I had no life, man. I had no freaking life. Nothing. There we go. They're clearing out that imbalance. There they go. Great. Yeah. So I, I had no life. Nothing. No life. Nothing whatsoever. So we should also try it, like to not have life. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> I had, I had, I had no life. I, I basically, um, I, I, I slept the charts, ate the charts. You devoted yourself. Well, yeah, you, well you, you, I tried it. That? I tried it, and yeah. um, I was like a zombie, and then I crashed my car into like a, a store so man yeah. that's not for everyone Hectic. Marco you have put everything in three in three or three months. wow what's that did you like did you like accomplish everything like in three or four months when you like had no days off uh, it took me about six months that's a do a six month course because I've accomplished what I've accomplished in six months. And I feel like since I can do it, and I believe everybody else can do it, if, you know, they dedicated, if they dedicated the way I am or I was, then they too can have the same outcome. 100%. Is, is, your, is your win-loss ratio consistent uh, every month with NASDAQ? Because I know it can change according to market conditions. Oh, no. Sometimes... Some, like 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 this month, uh, I think I've only made about three three and a half bars. Wow! But then last month, remember, I made ten bars. million million. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> last month you made ten. Yeah, I remember last last month I posted and I had made ten bars. So you were angry, eh? I was. <laughs> I was trying to prove a point, so yeah, that was 10 bars. Where this month, uh, I've been quiet here. I've made about three, I think, you know, probably close to three and a half, not even three and a half, eh? Like 3.3, maybe 3.2. And you're sitting, you're, you're actually sitting, okay, it's gone, gone. What's the end goal for you? Do you ever see yourself retiring or you feel like you're going to go into the 80s, you're still trading? I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go trading until I'm 90, man, I swear, yo. Like, it, it becomes so fun. It's no longer just, you know, trading. It's not just, it's no longer just work. But it's actually, you know, enjoying, you know, you know the, 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 the obstacles that come your way. Like, you know, it's almost like, you, you, like you're challenging these institutions. Like, yo, institutions, you think you're going to get me? Watch this. Boom. You start laughing at them and you're like, ha, 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 ha. You know, you didn't, you didn't see that one coming, you know. You Maybe you thought I didn't see that one coming. You understand? So it's almost like a challenge. Like, you're always challenged, you know, because you these, these institutions actually come for you because you realize that you're a retail trader, but trade like institutions. But it's still a retail trader, but trade like institutions. You understand? Mm -hmm. To a point when you actually overcome institutions. They don't even have... They have nothing on you. You're literally laughing at them like, really? You know, really? You, you think we don't know what's going to happen now? You understand? Mm -hmm. so, so who's your mentor? Like, today, my, the play out happened exactly the way I said. YouTube was my mentor. Was my mentor. Okay. But um, what I'm saying is that um, if you look today, that analysis that I put out there of the imbalance 
it played out exactly the way I said it would. Mm. Mm. Understand? It played out exactly the way I said it would. How did I know that? That's what I'm talking about. You know, challenging yourself to actually beating the market makers, market movers. You know, doing exactly. What's what the name of this uh, buddy of yours? The one that was in the classes. What was his name? Bruce. What was his name? Oh, uh, Bryce. Bryce. Yeah. Yeah. I heard all those guys that was came or they were messing up the group. They started the class with him this week. Is it? Hmm. Yeah, but the thing is that so I'm taking them all under the condition. Okay, that's fine. But what I'm saying is that um, the thing is that with Bryce, I feel like he's got the hello and then I don't know what he has after that. He's got the M82 and then I don't know what he's got after that. Like, I don't know if he, I don't know, I don't know if he can trade like smart money. I don't know. I didn't, I, I haven't seen that. Maybe he can, I don't know, but I'm just saying that I didn't, I haven't seen him trade smart money. And another thing is that how can you have, I don't know, how do you have a mentor and you make more profits than your mentor? Mentoring retail traders. Yeah, I guess. Because, I mean, if you think about it, like, um, how would you imagine? Imagine if you had me as a mentor, and I was making a hundred rand a day. Would you have taken me seriously? Man, <laughs> I'll dump you. <laughs> you understand? You understand? So it's it's almost like yeah, we want we want his knowledge, but what happens if he can't teach you how to pull the trigger? What happens if he can't take you into that psychology phase? Because he himself can't get out of it. Then all that he teaches you means nothing. If you can't execute a trade, you are you, doesn't matter how much you know. If you're afraid to execute a damn trade, if you can't do a trade off, then 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 you're pretty much good. At, it's, it's, it's basically wasting you wasting your time. That's so true. Because I I've I've had so much of loss. And, and FOMO because I mean I, I, I entered at the wrong time I just kept on um, you know not trusting my, my strategy I didn't have everything in, on point because you know I was just wasn't sure like it's just that psychology that makes such a big difference yeah and knowing doing a certain thing it, it brings so much of confidence that allows one to actually execute oh, I and that's why and that's why it basically becomes a situation where now, yes, I'm teaching you all of this, but what good is all of this if you can't trade? If you, as the mentor, can't even trade, how are you going to teach me? How, are you, how am I going to um, follow in your footsteps? I mean, how can I say that I'm going to, I can make you guys um, thousand is, million is, whatever the case is, if I myself am not a millionaire. True. That is true. You understand? So is Bryce not a millionaire? No, what? <laughs> what? No man. <laughs> Bryce, I even Bryce even I even funded a ten thousand rand account for Bryce, let me be honest. He yeah, he he was just making money from classes and stuff like that. But he, yeah, he, he wasn't well off. He's not well off at all, actually. Me and Faiz met him. Michael, can I ask you something? Uh, yeah. In case of him, I don't know. Um, he, he's, he has knowledge. I've been in one of his classes. Yeah, I think he does know his What's the problem? Why can't he make money? Because... You see, that's what I've been. That's that. That's why you're here. Psychology. Stop running to the market. Stop okay. running to the damn market. He wants to get in every opportunity he can. He wants to make the small hundred, two, three, four hundred rands. 
Why go for silver? I'm gonna have gold. Exactly. Why diamonds. should we buy? Why? All the ladies want diamonds. Men want gold. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Why buy? Right. Why buy at the REIT test? In a, on a long term basis. Right. When you could have bought in between an order block. Same as this. Why let them, why run to the market when you can just wait for the damn market to come to this level? Let the market come to you. By that time, by that time, you would have figured out exactly what this market wants to do. You would have known whether this market is going to hold this level or not. You would have seen price action unfold. Why are you running to the market? Don't become a slave to the market. Let the market come to you. And again, psychology. You see, that way traders' biggest downfalls are psychology. They can only make a thousand rand a day because anything more and the inner you goes crazy. Like, what? You crazy? I'm, what? Hell no, you're not going to spend that type of money. Are you mad? What happens if you lose all of that damn money? Yo, what happens if I do lose all that money? Oh my gosh, maybe I'm going to lose all that damn money. <sighs> so what do I do? Don't take the damn trade. Okay, fine. I won't take the damn trade. What happens if you took the damn trade? What happens if you took the damn trade at this level? Mm. Get me? Yeah. Yeah. What happens if you took the damn trade at this level? Well, now you could have had a small fortune. But because your mind was like, oh, what happens if you lose that money? Oh my gosh, what happens if the market doesn't come back to this level? Oh, you're going to lose all that money. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So you need to get over that. Mm. And as long as you can't get over that, you will never be a successful trader. I'm going to be honest. You will never be a successful trader. You will have all the knowledge in the world. You can go and say, listen, I know Wyckoff. I know ICT. I know everything. But now, show us that you can make money from what you know. I mean, there's no point in going and learning to become a lawyer if you're not going to be a lawyer. There's no point in going and saying to be to do medicine, right? And, 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 and you're telling yourself you want to become a lawyer. Um, a, a, a doctor and yet you can't get a job as a doctor. Well, then, what was the point of you studying? All of that knowledge means nothing. Exactly the same with the markets. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you can't execute, maintain that knowledge, if you can't do anything with that knowledge, that knowledge means nothing. All you're going to be able to do is teach the next person, but as long as you can't teach that person how to use that knowledge accordingly so he too can become profitable, then that person will be just like you. And birds of the same feathers will continue to flock together. That's why I don't mind when people take my students or take this or go create a group or teach this person because, yes, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you can't apply the one thing that needs to be applied, doesn't matter how much knowledge you have. Makes a lot of sense. So, Mark, what specific videos did you watch on YouTube? Uh, I watched everything. Sure. I watched everything. I watched all of Michael's Mint FX. I watched everything. Yeah, it's um, Mint FX. But you see, again, all they teaching you is the knowledge. Nobody can teach you the psychology. 
we can only, I can only bring it out of you to a point where it becomes a norm that you don't even think about it and therefore when you actually trade, it's almost like, you know, you're so used to it, you're so used to winning, you're so used to winning, you're so used to winning that you can't lose. You see yourself as a person yeah. who cannot lose. And that's what needs to happen. You need, to, you need to get to that point where you see yourself as a person who cannot lose. I am bulletproof in this market. <laughs> and until then, you will continue to fall. You will continue to be taken out by these big bullies. They will continue to bully you. So you decide that, you know what? I'm putting on this gear. I am fucking bulletproof. Watch me. Wow. Oh, I think I need to be bold. Very. If you go and ask Faiz, how many times did I need to tell him, listen, go in, go in, go in to a point where it became a norm. Now he knew that at every retest, I'm entering a position, entered a position, entered two, three, four positions. Sometimes he even went overboard. He did things I wasn't even thinking he would do. You understand? Now, now he holds 15, 20 positions. Hmm. Well, Spy is your student. Yes. That was the first millionaire after Samantha. Wow. wow. Samantha is a millionaire. Yes. Wow. <laughs> hey, you guys. But, she doesn't, <laughs> but her post doesn't make her look like she's a millionaire. Wow. It's the same as Faiz. Faiz's posts are private. Unless she's pretty, you will see them. Wow. So what do you suggest? What do we start off with? Do we start off with a demo account and just applying these this strategy specifically over and over again until we, we master it, which it becomes part of our subconscious mind and our way of trading, where we just we become bulletproof that way? Or like how, how do we do this? Well, there's, I feel like the only way to really become bulletproof is to actually trade small accounts. Okay. And build those. Okay. Because if you can trade a small account, then what will you do to a bigger account? Sure. If you can take a thousand to ten thousand, what are you gonna do with a ten thousand account? Mm -hmm. What is the smallest amount you've turned? Was it two hundred? Yeah. Was it two hundred? Was it on, on, on my Instagram, I've got one for 400. I took 400 to 9,000. Yeah. Wow. So on my Instagram, so you can go check. Yeah. But you see, patience, and I let the market come to me. Mm. I didn't chase the market. Because if I chase the market, I was going to have a fear of missing out. Mm. Was that in one day? No. No, that was in three... What? It was... I was holding. I think it was about two or three days. Okay, so you were very patient. No, but you see, I wasn't I wasn't holding trades. I was in and out. Profits are profits to me. So scalping. Not scalping, but in a day trading. So I was, I was trading. Like, let's say I would trade that sound. It just happened now. See this big candle that came down? Excuse me. Let's add that. Then I'd get out, and from that, I would have made about 1,500, 2,000 rands. And now I have 2,500. So from 2,500, I'd take it to 5,000. 5,000 to 7.5. 7.5 to 10 or 9. And then you would have found out that I would have had 20 trades that made me 9,000 rand. Nice. Thank you. That's how we build small accounts. Profits are profits. So you make 200 rand and, and, and you feel like this is, this, is, this is enough for you, take that 200 rand. If you make uh, 800 rand, take the 800 rand. You're still building your account regardless. All profits 
will help you in the long run. Because you'll have a 500 grand account, next thing you have a 700 grand account. Now you've got a 700 grand account, you just made 700, you doubled your account, you've got a 1,400 grand account. Now you've got a 1,400 grand account, you take it to 2,000. 2,000, 2,500, 2,500, 2,800. So you make that when you open that, um, when you started with the 400 grand, you just opened one position. Yeah, correct. I opened one position, but it had to be such a precise entry. What, so what, was, what was your leverage? One to 500. I was doing a 500. My leverage is one to 500. I was doing one to 500. Now I do obviously one to 1,000. Oh. And that uh, one to depends. Depends. But um, at that time it was one to 500. So that was my leverage. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd basically go from I actually, I, I, I would actually like scalp. So I would do something like this. Well, not really scalp, but it would be an ending trade. I would do, I would, I would run on a 15 minute chart. I would never run on the bigger charts. I would run on a 15 minute chart. My account cannot handle drawback. So I would go to a 15 minutes, minute account. Obviously. And I would look at price action here. So this is how I would work. I would work from 15 minutes. 30 minutes, one, one hour being my highest. One hour would be my bias. So one hour would be my bias. This would give me my direction in the market. Right? This would give me my direction in the market. Let's say I wanted to now take this sell off over here. I would then, I would obviously just mark this territory. Right? And then I would go to a 15 minutes. minute chart. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay, fine. What happened? at this level, okay, fine. So at this level, right, we were waiting, the market came back, right? Now I'm waiting for a retest, right, after a break of structure. And now, where would my entry be? My entry would be on a five minute chart. So I'm looking for the same thing, but now I'm looking for them to have made a decision. So at this level, they made a decision to push up, right? At this level, they made a decision to push up. At this level, they then made a decision to push down. So automatically, I knew, right? We had rest impulse, right? And then, correction. That you would only see on a higher time frame, though. So what I did was like, okay, fine. What I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to wait, right, for the market to come to me. I'm going to take the... Highs this market went. <laughs> to the closing on that candle. Right? So I said, okay, fine. We're now waiting for a retest at this level of support. So support needs to turn to resistance. That's what I got. I got support turning into resistance. So my first trade came in over here and I would make a thousand going down, right? I would make a thousand going down, knowing very well that they'll probably mitigate 50% of that movement, which they did. And then as we tapped into this level, right, 
I will then enter my next position and continue to sell the market. And as we can see now, they want to make a decision. So what decision are we making? I don't know. But because the market went up, here it went down, I'm, 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 I'm taking it that the market will come to this level. And then back down. Understand? Now here, from here to here on both trades, I've doubled my accounts. I take my profits. Right? I take my profits. I wait for the market to come to me. I'm here. I want the market to come to me. The market comes to me, I enter. I sell. Right? But even if the market comes all the way back up, I can still break even and I would have still had a account that was doubled. The market could never take this money away from me. That was in the bank. I banked that. Now, now that I have a loss, even though I didn't lose money, now that I have a loss, I'm going to give the market a break. Tomorrow is another day. I'll make another two grand. Or three grand. By the end of the week, I would have made 10 grand. What I'm doing? Yeah. Or you could use um, trend line. I don't know if you use trend lines. Who uses trend lines here? Do you use trend lines? I don't. You could have on a first touch, second touch, and the third touch you sell. That's your first touch, second touch, and then your third touch. You saw, and then, and the model continues to give you opportunities you enter. You saw, and this level gets respected. You saw. There's many ways to do this. The trend line, I don't know, it doesn't really work. Not for me, that is. Yeah, trend line doesn't really work. Now, for me, I feel like, I don't know. Because, I mean, we could say, fine, we're waiting for three touches. So, we're waiting for three touches, then one touch. Two touch. How long am I going to wait for the next touch? I might as well just say when it comes into my supply zone, I'll sell the market. Pretty much what we would say, in a way. Yeah, zones are the best. Did you see that? Okay. 
happening and didn't say, okay, fine. Wait for, wait for the market to come to me, and I sell. Crazy, right? Okay. Anyway, guys, I'm just saying crazy. Okay. So, Nasdaq is currently ranging. What's that? Nasdaq is currently ranging. Let's see. Pretty much, yeah. Oh. You know, certain time in the day where you say, okay, now I'm done trading for the day. Uh, so you just trade 10 hours and everything like this. Yeah, I trade whenever I want. Okay, and then you write the time now and start counting for the market. <laughs> Look at this. Even Wyckoff worked over here. Look at this. Yeah. So we had accumulation. Push down. We had the spring. Spring. We test. Equal highs. <laughs> the accumulation. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that everything you teach? Yeah. Can I just show you how Michael even plays out on five minutes? <laughs> it's a five minutes five guys. Crazy, right? Yeah. Accumulation, spring, retails, we have high highs, we accumulation. If I call this spring B taste maybe equal lows are exactly what you have. But can you see how it all kind of like looks the same? History repeats itself. Not exactly, but it's very close. Can you see that? We have equal highs. Probably get equal lows. Get this in the spring. We have the reaches. And price push the shot. Oh. Okay, 
It was a great greatest. test. Tribulation. Bring retail smart money. Smart money. Highs. Thank you. 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 Make sense, uh, maybe. Think I'm done. So what I'm gonna tell you guys is wait for I'm uh, going to come to you. Anyway, guys, I'm out. <laughs> sure, sure, my bro. Thank, Thank you very much, Marco. I'm stressed, man. I'll see you guys on the other side next week. Okay. Oh, man. The market come back to this level. Okay, there was an order block. There's no screen. Wow. Can't. I see my screen. No. What the hell, man. Um, hold on. Ah. Can we see it? No, it's not sharing it. But it says I'm sharing my screen. Do you share? Yeah, it's back up. There we go. can see it right now. Wow, the network is crap. So, why do you think? It didn't hold again, even though it was an order block that broke that high. Why didn't it hold? Why did they break right through it? Because it was already touched. Exactly. Thank you. Someone's listening. Yes, correct. It was its strongest. Like I said, it was its strongest over here. It was at its strongest over here. Once it got a touch, this was it. It was over. Don't expect that order block. Don't expect that um, demand zone to hold again. It won't. If, you, if you're analyzing a chart and you're expecting that demand zone to hold again, it won't. You with me? With you. Yes. All right. So this is why you see this order block and you're like, oh my gosh, this order block must be mitigated because it broke structure. Yes, it broke structure, but this zone is done. We are waiting for a level to be tapped into and then price to move away from it. That's exactly what happened. Price moved away. That was oh it. That's what that level was for. Don't expect that level to hold again. It won't. You with me? Yes, yes sir. 
make sense. Great. So now, so now, now that we have this certain price action happening, right? What happened? The market then came down, right? But we failed to break that low, right? So that order block, right, at the, at, at the high over there was not even an order block, right? It might look like an order block, but it won't hold like an order block, right? So what happened was the market came down, it went back up, right? So this level, this level, right, this level where price broke up didn't break previous highs, right? It was this low, it was this low that broke previous structure, right? Who's with me? Yes. It was this low, right? If that was a high, that was a low, oh my God. that was a high, that was a low. Right? Holy shit. So we knew you that be kidding me. the minute the market broke that low, what were we waiting for? We were waiting for exactly that. The market to come back in, we didn't get a touch over here. Right? So what is it? It's this order block over here that we're waiting for a touch at, right? So we zoom in over here. We can see now that it's this order block right over there that we were waiting for a mitigation to happen at, right? Well, there. I'm not going to draw them 100%, guys. You, I'm sure you guys know about order blocks, right? So we were looking for the market to come into that level. Why did this order block hold? It was the first time it was getting tested. Exactly. So this order block broke previous structure. So what this means, right, is basically this order block took what it needed to take, liquidity. It's taken what it needed to take. There was no reason, there was no reason, right, for it to come back to this level. Hence, when they came back to this level, after bouncing off, it broke right through because there was nothing here, nothing for it to come back to. Market broke right through, right through that demand zone. That's crazy. Okay, new and you like, oh my gosh. No, and then you're thinking, but what the hell? Why did it do that? That demand zone was invalid. Let's look at where it got its extra touch. It got so many okay, touches. So right? So many it got this from, from here. This was the strongest it was at, right? Because even over here, it kind of like just would have missed that sub, that um, demand zone, or would have just slightly pushed in. Not even, not even, not even, because if we're looking at this order block, right? This would have been the order block that broke previous structure right over. Yeah. Or oh, where is it? Roughly there. And then there. So we're looking for price to come in. It came in, pushed away, came back in pushed away. How many times do you want this price to come into this level? You understand? Sometimes sometimes price does. Sometimes price does continue to come into this level, 
right? But now look at orders over here, right? If you were looking at that order block to hold continuously, right? And it didn't, and you were like, oh my gosh, what happened? It just, it just slightly missed it, right? You can't, yes, it's a coincidence when the order block continues to hold, right? It's just a coincidence. But in most cases, those order blocks don't hold. Once you get your second touch, you should be done with that order block or you should be done with that supply or demand zone. <coughs> Making sense? Yeah. It's a, coincid it's a coincidence. You understand? It's a coincidence. It's the same as over here. If we looked over here, right? <coughs> it was this order block over here. That broke this low. Right? We had this low over here. Even though you, some might say, no, it's not a low, but it's a low. Here's a low. That's a low, right? Well, no, that's not a low. Hold on. <laughs> this is a low, guys. Yes? That's a low, correct? On a higher time frame, if we go to a smaller time frame, that's a low. This low, right? This low, right? This low was broken by this low, right? And that's why at this low, the market fell from here. But just as much as this order block held, the market fell from there. Came back into this order block mitigated there and the market fell. Can we all see that? Yes. Yeah. Right? It is because of the strength of that level. This level was never tapped into. And as you can see, from there, the market continued to tap into it. This level only became a valid level, right? Once that structure was broken, right? And the market would come back to that structure and then price would pull away. You with me? Got you. Right? So it's the same thing as this. If we come, if we come further down to where price ended, we have another order block, right? Would this order block hold? Yes. Why? Because we had this low <sighs> that was violated by that push away from price. Price pushed away breaking this low, meaning that this low, right, had more than enough orders for them to come back to mitigate and then price pushed away. Who's with me? Yeah. Then you can so see Marco the opposite of what happened over here. Hold on. The opposite of what happened over here now happened over here. Instead of price pushing back to the downside, price pushed to the upside, back into, back into that zone. But then failed. If you're waiting for the next touch, it failed. It was its strongest. It was its strongest at its First touch. So it got one, two, three. You can't expect it to get a, 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 a fourth. It could happen, but in most cases, you don't rely on it. You with me?
with me. Marco, can I ask a question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just where your cursor is right now, um, yeah. in between those two zones, there's that other red candle just before the price shot up above the, the double, the equal highs. Can you see it there? Just to the left of your cursor right there. Would that be considered an order block that maybe they might retest later on? Uh, if they were going to retest it, they would, would have retested it a long time ago. Um, that would be an order block and they would have mitigated it 50%. But you can see over here that it was, it was this order block. It was this order block that broke this high. It wasn't this order block. This no, no, order uh, block just, started. Just a bit more, a bit more just to, yeah, just above there. Uh, talking about this red block of this over on, here on the on the right on the right on the other side on the other on the up leg as it goes up it yeah. it stopped for a bit no on the right as it was going up where current price is now right the leg that yeah. that started so, it over to the right yeah. some more okay let me yeah. do this let me just uh pin it for you right there right here or right there draw, draw my screen okay yeah right there yeah that's what I, oh yeah Yes. Is that an order block? That is an order block, right? But, but at the end of the day, right, mm. it was this order block, right, that started the push. I'm However, really though, it was that order block that I'm broke really these highs. So this could be a very well validated order block, 100%. This could be a level that the market could very well come back to and test. All right, yes, hundred percent, right. But now let's look at if this order block was respected. You see, now it's at it's at its strongest. It's at its absolute strongest because this order block hasn't been tested. So, should price come to this level, we would then see price bounce off. It's a very, it, 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 it's a strong level. The reason I'm saying it's a strong level, but remember, nothing's guaranteed in a market, guys. But the reason it's a strong level, right, is because this year, this was the highs. It was this candlestick, right? It was these orders over here that it violated previous highs. Previous structure. Hence, when the market came back and tapped into those highs, right, price pushed away. Am I making sense? Yeah, definitely. You understand? It was these, it was this order block Right, it was this order block that broke these highs. Yes, it was this order block. It was this demand zone that was going to hold, and price pushed away. Order block hold value. In for them to come back to that order block. Is there a reason for them to mitigate out of their positions, right? If it didn't break structure, right, then the next institution came in. So this institution over here pushed price higher, right? This institution over here, right? So we had this huge order block over here. Right? We had this massive order block over here. Right? That then pushed price higher, failed to break this high, and therefore they took their profits. So there was no, there are no longer orders at this level. They've taken their profits, right? They pulled back and gave over to their next institution.
Ah, ok, sicuro. Mm. Your internet connection is unstable, but it's fine. Um, it was then these institutions, right, that then push price higher. Everybody with me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, uh, All right. you're right. The bank so, for the institution. So we need to look at which level is going to hold. Right? There's a lot more value for them at this level, right? Because what happened at this level, right, was there was so much buying orders going up that it broke previous highs. This candle over here helped. It helped, but they didn't quite finish the mission. It was these can, this, this institution that then pushed price higher, right? Because this same institution could have pushed price lower, overpowering these guys' buys. Remember, guys, that if I put 10 buys into the market and someone comes in and puts 50 sales, it's going to push my buys, it's going to, it's going to push the market down. Let's just say, let's just say an institution came in and decided they're going to push um, 500 million US dollars into Microsoft. Microsoft is part, of, is part of NASDAQ, right? And then we have another institution that's like, okay, we're only going to push like 20,000 USD to Amazon. And then uh, another person comes in and says, we're going to push another um, 250 thousand dollars into Microsoft. What do you think Nasdaq's gonna do? What is this gonna happen to price? You buying into Nasdaq, you pumping money into Nasdaq. Remember now, Nasdaq is an umbrella. Nasdaq is an umbrella of a hundred of the most profitable tech companies. That's Nasdaq. When we are on the markets, we are with NASDAQ, when investors and banks and institutions are in the market, they are with the stocks that push NASDAQ as the umbrella. Make sense? Yes, sir. Makes, 100%. Makes sense. So yeah. you, are, you, are, you are basically saying prices going up from those 100 tech companies where they are buying per stock. They buy per stock. You understand? So the minute the minute Microsoft has a huge pump of money put into it, what do you think it's going to do to Nasdaq? Since Nasdaq is the mother, and all the kids are now pumping money into the mother. What do you think the mother's going to do? Mother's going to get happy and go up. Price goes up, right? And therefore, it overpowers your 20 cells. Your $20,000 cells get overpowered. So at this level, you could have found in the institutions at this level, but because, because price was up, they were like, okay, cool, let's take advantage and push price even higher. We've already got, so, we've already got such a huge helping hand from these guys, but they failed. So let's get in and push price even higher. You understand? Or you'll find out the same right? The same institutions, right? Didn't have enough capital, but then at the same, they just started pumping more my orders and push price high because at this level, they couldn't just push price Make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah, it does, Mato. Yes, sir. I'm just yeah. saying. All right. So price pushed higher, breaking, breaking these, right? Breaking these lows. Price pushed higher. But how did price push higher? Price pushed higher from this order block, right? But already, if these orders went up, what was the need for them to come back to this order block? There wouldn't be a need, right? There wouldn't be a need 
to come back and mitigate this order block, right? If at this order block, all the orders went up, right? All the orders went up. Nobody was trying to sell the markets. It might be at this level that they started to put in sell positions. Hence, the market went down and then went up. So you can see that the guys who started to sell the market off were overpowered by a bigger institution that pushed price even higher. Remember that a red candle means sell orders. Lord. You, you with me? So if someone tried to sell the market off before people jumped in to push the price higher. Someone tried to sell the market off and then they, someone jumped in to push price higher. So at these levels, at these levels, right, they are sell orders. So if, 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 if they're selling the market, how much in a negative do you think they are when they're over here? How much of a negative do you think these guys are in, right? If this institution or these retail investors were selling a market off at this level, selling a market off at this level, how much of, how much in negative are they when they're over here? Very big. Trillions, millions, billions. You understand? And so once, once this happens, a strong enough institution won't mind, won't mind, you know, their orders being in a negative. And what happens is they will then push price down, mitigate that order block, and then push price higher. Or might even push price. Oh gosh. Push price lower. Right? Come and mitigate that order block. And then from there bounce. Oh my gosh. And then from there, bounce off. You understand? Oh my God. Marco, the, the trend is going up. If we draw a trend line from the bottom all the way there, going upwards. Would that 100%. Work? 100%. No, but 100%. We, we don't use trend lines. But 100%. The trend line, the trend is up. Mm. But however, though, the trend is still up. The trend is still up. Always up for the next day. What the hell? You understand? The trend is still up. It is when this low is violated. You understand? That low is violated, which means we've now broken support, which would have turned to resistance, right? Now look at this. We had our first touch, right? If this was an order block, Price pushed away from it. This guy so Price bad. could very well break through it. Mm, okay. We can't expect that order block to hold. We cannot. Don't expect price to bounce off here. That order block's already been manip manipulated. It's done. You understand? It's done. Even though it created another order block over here, Price came back to that order block and bounced off. Price moved away. So we knew that at this level, price was going to come in, right? And then you can see that after that, after that, after that, 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 that third touch, right? It hardly touched. We can see that price just continued to bounce away from that. So sooner or later, this order block won't hold and will bounce, break right through it. Everybody with me? 
Yes. Now, let's talk about order flow. Now, order flow at a level is even worse. Now, when I talk about order flow, I talk about something like this. You'll probably get a lot more touches and a lot more power off order flow, right? So when I talk about order flow, I talk about a level where multiple, there was multiple orders being pushed in. Right? So we had an order block, but there were so much orders being pushed in at this order block. With me? Who's with me? Right? Yes, but however though, however though, it was only this the, the, the only reason, the only reason that they came back into here, right? was because of this order flow. Right? Normally we get body to body, right? It was only because of that order flow that the market tapped into it. Otherwise, there is no order block over there that was respected. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Right? It's because of the orders that were put in over here. We had sell orders, buy orders, sell orders, buy orders. So those who came in to collect their buy orders, right? You must remember that some, some orders didn't go off over here. So price came back in over here, right? Mitigating 50% of what happened over here closing off 50% of their orders, cutting, cutting, cut, cutting losses or breaking even, right? And then we saw that this, this order block at this level held because it broke previous structure as we saw previously. And we would then see that order block then being mitigated and price pushed away from it. But the only reason, the only reason that this, or, this, this, this level held is because of the order flow over here. If there wasn't so much orders at this level, there was no reason for them to come back. Hence, they didn't mitigate this order block. It didn't break previous structure. Everybody with me? Yes, sir, I'm with you. Oh, you're with me, right? Yeah, we're with you, man. Because if you were thinking that order block was going to hold and then come and be mitigated, that wasn't the case. They came and mitigated all their orders out of here because they knew right, that there were so many orders over here that probably didn't go into the market. Uh -huh. 